What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast. I'm your host, Will Brown. I got some special guests in the building. I'm going to start with you, lady. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Naya Murphy, and I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida. Hi, I'm Ashlyn Denson, and I'm from Tampa, Florida. What's going on, everybody? I'm Savion St. John, and I'm from Detroit, Michigan. What's up? I'm Denzel Smith from East Chicago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nia, and I'm from Clayton County, Georgia. Hey y'all, my name is LaVincia Walker and I'm from Pensacola, Florida. Oh yeah, we got some special guests in the building yeah. today. We got somebody from somebody everywhere. <laughs> today we got a good conversation piece for y'all. It's are you for or against educating non-black people? These type of topics can get real. Yeah, but tough. before we get into that, I want to ask everybody on the panel, on a scale of 1 to 10, rate yourself mentally and where you're at when it comes to business. Start with you. Um... I'm gonna mentally I'm gonna rate myself at an eight and you said rate myself as far as where I'm at with business Mm -hmm. um again I'm gonna rate myself at an eight I'm a store manager now so I feel like I'm elevating slowly but surely but one step at a time so that's how I feel okay yes as far as mentally I think I've increased to a 7.5 thank God I'm done with school um, momentarily as far as the spring semester business wise I think that I'm a nine because I'm always doing things that pushes me to be a very professional person whether it's even with everything but yeah so 7.5 mentally and then nine for business I rock with that Mentally, I would say I'm at about a seven or eight, somewhere in that range. And business-wise, I always believe that every day is an opportunity to progress. And with me being at the age that I'm at, I feel like there's a lot that I still can learn. So I don't consider myself a businessman. But if I had to put myself on a scale to be a business person, I would say maybe about a six. Yeah, just being honest. Um, I'm at a ten mentally. I, I'm, I'm, and we probably gonna discuss it later, but oh yeah. Um, I'm in a good place right now. So I'm about out of 10. And then business, I'm out of 10. I, I'm, I'm feeling good about everything that's going on. So, yeah, I'm going to do a 10 and a 10. Yeah. I keep forgetting it's me next. <laughs> um, <laughs> mentally, I'm doing okay. I'm at an 8. And business-wise, I'm at a 5 because I'm in school still. So I feel like me being in school is like, blocking my mental from solely being able to focus on my business so it can really like take off well mentally i'm a 10 i'm just a naturally happy person yeah. so we praise the lord that, for that because at one it. point i wasn't a 10 but mm-hmm. i'm there now Thanks. um business wise ooh, that's a great question i think i'm probably about at an eight business wise i'm taking care of family business right now for i um, handle my own personal business. I think, you know, you got to handle family first. So that, that's me personally handling family first before you get into, you know, the money, the real money stuff. Beautiful. I like yeah, this. Right. This is a good vibe in here. I like <laughs> this right here, boy. This is some good stuff. So since it's a good vibe, I'm going to throw some good shit y'all away. Okay. Y'all ready to get off into some good shit right here? Yeah, right. Okay. Who's more desperate? The girl who messes with the man who has a girlfriend or the girl who knows her man is cheating and stays. Ooh. Ooh. Equal. Damn. Mm. I'm going to swing it this way. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to swing it this way. Thank you for coming to me Come first because I think I got a lot to say about this. <laughs> As somebody who has a lot of pride, I think staying with somebody who I know is messing around on me I think I feel like I'm a little bit more desperate because I feel like, oh, maybe I'm in a position where I feel like I can't do better than that if I'm staying. So if I'm down like that, I'm probably going to stay. But I mean, on another wavelength, you know, somebody who knows that they have somebody and still continues to mess around with them, it could not be. It, maybe it's not an emotional thing or maybe they get a rise out of it. Some people do. For y'all start saying, looking at me crazy now. Mm-hmm. Some people do get a rise out of that. So I, I think if I was in a relationship with somebody messing around on me, I think I'm more desperate in that position than the other. Mm. What you think, lady? It's on you. Know. You like, don't know? I feel like it's low-key like a desperate Olympics. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. it's <laughs> hot. <laughs> One cannot be worse than the other. They're both mm-hmm. freaking bad. Like, I don't know. I just don't see one being 
tipping the scale because it's just like y'all both shot out mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're both wrong so i don't know i i think they're equal to me okay well, yeah. you can respect that that's the beauty of the podcast you yeah. don't have to just agree with yeah. somebody else it's your own personal perspective so oh, yeah we love debates over here okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah, I, I can Hello. tell this gonna be a good one right here yeah. all right my brother denzel um i'm thinking that for me if i know you out there cheating on me or anything and i still decide to stay that's not just desperation, that's stupidity. So I'm gonna have to go with that option. Cause for me, you choosing to still be around. Like the mm-hmm. other situation for me is like, all right, that's just the game you play, whatever the case may be, which is still desperate like Nia is mm-hmm. saying, but you know what's going on. Like you mm-hmm. know, and you have to lay up with this person. Y'all might be living together. It's just too deep at that point. So I think that's the most desperate okay. and stupid. My brother. Yeah, I'm going to agree and say that the most desperate person is the person who's in the relationship with the person that knows that they're being cheated on because it's like, you committed to that person, so why would you break that commitment to that person in any way? So Like, what you holding on to? Yeah, like, what, what, why are we here if you out here doing this with everybody else? So, I do agree that they're, like, equally um, desperate. However, I will say that the first, uh, as far as the um, person that's, chasing after the person that's already in the relationship i think that's very desperate because um why not just get your own like it's almost you know it's almost like you're you're, you're so desperate for a relationship that you will settle for somebody who's not fully yours but it's almost like the same thing because even the latter who um is knowingly staying knowing that their person is cheating it's like that's not really yours either but so it's almost like equally the same but i feel like with the other one the reason why i won't say that the one where they're staying knowing that their person is cheating the reason why i won't say that that's more desperate is because we don't know the situation they may have kids they may be married so it's a lot of things that might keep that person holding on so it's a lot of history versus a person who's just like knowingly chasing somebody who you knows in the relationship it's like that's very desperate. So I'm gonna go with that one. The one that's chasing, that's not in the relationship, but chasing the person that's in the relationship. You desperate, period. <laughs> you desperate. Um, I need you to repeat it, cause I need to make sure I understood. Yeah, I so, so we wanna know who's more desperate. The woman who knows that this man is in a relationship mm-hmm. and still basically attempts chasing. to deal with this person. Okay. Or the person that knows I'm getting cheated on mm-hmm. and I'm still staying. Um, okay, I'm gonna say the person who is chasing after the person that's in a relationship is more desperate just because I feel like it's always it's somebody for everybody. And obviously that person is not your person if they're with somebody. Mm-hmm. Like they're with someone. So either way it's wrong, but I still feel like if you're gonna chase, like, come on lie. You're grown, like you don't have to chase, like go get your own. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel like it would be definitely des- more desperate for me to be chasing you, and I know you already in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, I do think that the situation is wrong to try and engage with somebody who you know is in a relationship, but I think that once you know that you're in this committed relationship and you decide to still stay, knowing you're getting cheated on, I think you're the desperate person. Mm-hmm. Cheating is never good, mm-hmm. but let's be honest. Like I always talk, I always talk about people that's married. Your commitment is to a, a certain person. Mm-hmm. Right. So if this person is just on the side, I don't get two shits about you. If you ain't my homeboy, <laughs> nothing, I don't get two shits about you. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you engage in that, you don't know what benefit comes out of that. You know, I, I may be just looking for a good time. I don't want to deal with the commitment of it. People may sit there and say, oh, are you desperate? And like you said, there's somebody for everybody. It is. This may be my somebody oh, that's going to sponsor what, about what I need. And hey, you standing in my way. You know, people talk about self-worth all the time. But every day you see people doing bullshit. <laughs> it, it may not necessarily be the cheat. You may be gossiping too goddamn much. True. You know, there, there's people that, that get out here on a daily basis and their shit start. Yeah, you in somebody you you may not be fucking up somebody relationship as far as no cheating shit, but you may be speaking on some shit you shouldn't be speaking on. Mm-hmm. People ain't really got no self worth nowadays. We like to think we do, but we all do something that somebody else would deem as being some bullshit. That's yeah. true. So, in my opinion, the person that knows they're getting cheated on and continues to stay, man, kids, I'm not staying for that. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't give a damn. I'm not staying for the sake of no kids. Listen Dude. to me. I'm gonna look in this camera and say this in case y'all didn't know this. I have kids by two different women, and at no point will I ever stay based on them kids. Ooh. No point in my life because at the end of the day, when my kids see me unhappy, True. how do I expect them to be happy? 
-hmm. How do I expect them to see what a healthy, happy relationship looks like? Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking miserable on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I don't give nobody a pass saying, well, you know, because of the kids, you better take your stupid ass home. Mm -hmm. What you better do? <sighs> Shit. Fuck you kids. But you know, y'all y'all a little younger than me. So you know, uh -huh. well, you, a few more years, y'all get on that same wavelength. Well, I, I, I watched my how my parents' relationship unraveled, mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of stuff go down. And so I understand where you're coming from, because I really don't want to see my mama unhappy. Yeah. I would rather see my mama going on with somebody else instead of staying in a relationship just for the sake of us. And she did for a long time, and I didn't even know. And when they started having problems, it was just a big buildup of stuff, and everything mm -hmm. was just so dramatic. And then things get dirty. Yeah. It gets dirty real quick. And we were older, so I think when you're older, you're a lot more susceptible to that manipulation, and you get affected more when you're older by that manipulation other than when you're a child. Because I think that's something that you could probably grow out of mm -hmm. eventually because you've been seeing this all the time. But it's like... When you older, you ain't never seen your parents do no stuff like this before. And love will make... That's why they say it. there's a very thin line between love and hate. Mm. Because you can't hate nobody that you never once loved. Mm. And yep. you can't... It, it's bad to see that at the age... I was like 16 at the time. So I had a very convoluted perception of what I thought love was for some years and that's something that I'm still unlearning to this day mm -hmm. because of how I saw my parents stay together just because of us. Wow. Ooh, I love words like convoluted. <laughs> hey, that that's that college degree. That's that college degree. That's that college degree. The great Bethune Cookman University degree. No, Miss T.I. I like that. I like that shit right there. Anybody else want to add a little bit to that or or we can go and get off into the topic? Y'all ready? Okay, cool. Are you for or against educating non-black people? Who want to kick this thing off? My brother. That's what I'm talking about. Go and rep for the fellas. <laughs> so, being an educator for Detroit Public Schools, um, firstly, I want to say that I chose to teach in Detroit Public Schools because I am a product of Detroit Public Schools. And also, I wanted to give back to the kids that came from the neighborhood that I came from which are majority black kids. I will say I do have my minority students who are um, Latino or white, but for the majority at the school that I teach at, I teach a majority black race of kids. And it's a great experience for me because I teach them academics, but I also teach them life lessons. So I'm not gonna say I'm against teaching other races, but for the most part, I'm here for everybody black. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, anybody who wanna go next? I'll just say it's not my job. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not my job mm -hmm. to to show you or give you the the resources or tools that you need to treat me right or treat me like I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. I I can care I don't care if a white person, for instance, knows how to understand me because mm -hmm. honestly they could never understand me. Mm -hmm. So it would be a sense of wasting my time and I'm not saying that out at a human level, yeah, sure. But us as black people, we get something that they won't because mm -hmm. of our, our heritage, because of, unfortunately, even our trauma that we've experienced for generations. That's something. How can I educate you on my trauma? Mm -hmm. And why would I want to waste my time? I'm, I'm, more in, I'm more involved in showing and teaching my, my fellow brothers and sisters mm -hmm. about ourselves. Now, mm -hmm. I'm all for that. And, and, and if the support comes from the, um, the other people, the other races, yeah, it's all love. But at the end of the day, when it's time to get in the trenches, I feel more confident and more comfortable with my people, mm -hmm. you know. And I just, and it's not a sense of um, trying to shun you out or anything like that because I embrace all. But at the end of the day, I know Will can understand something that Tom can't. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's no disrespect, but we just don't necess necessarily speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So it's a waste of time it's, in most cases. Tom um, say, I got rims and Tims and all that good <laughs> shit, too. <laughs> Shout out to Tom. Hey, but, but you know what? Um, I it's, I hate that it's necessary. I don't, I don't want it to be necessary. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and me as somebody who... I think I naturally am just a, like a natural teacher. And so, yes, I, I feel an extreme duty to my black folks. 
I and, and that's it's a beautiful thing when I when I'm teaching a black child how to do something and that light just comes yeah. on in their head. That is such a beautiful thing to me. But what needs to be happening is non black folks need to learn this and it's like, how is that going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like for instance, I don't like code switching. I I shouldn't right. have to I shouldn't have to talk like this. In front of people for them to understand me. Right. You know, I, I want to talk how I want to talk. And you know what? <laughs> That's real. Here's the thing. I don't understand why the way that I talk um, is like their gauge of how they're going to respect me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all, y'all teach people how to do, quote unquote, proper English. But you can't teach african-american vernacular english or you can't even try to learn how to understand it so that's why i think it's very necessary for non-black people to be educated on those things um i just think that there are certain people that are geared towards those skill sets um for instance me kind of sort of kind of but i think i'm more comfortable teaching black folks how to do stuff instead of teaching white folks how to not only respect our things but actually learn about those things and i'm lo- i'm low key a gatekeeper y'all some mm-hmm. things i feel like black i miss when black folks were kept a secret <laughs> you know cuz it seemed like when white folks get our shit they fuck it up True. so <laughs> yes let's yeah, clap for that cuz i i can't stand no appropriators but i'm done i'm going to get off my soapbox y'all <laughs> Okay. Anybody else want to go? Come on, I know y'all got some good <laughs> shit to say now. Come on now. You, you, you can go ahead. Um. So for me, like this is a very complex um, subject. Like it's not. I don't feel like there's one. For me, there's not just one answer. Um, but I'm one of the. Matter of fact, I'm the only black girl in my action cohort, um, in my MFA program, right? And it's it's like i don't even i'm i'm like y'all like i don't even try to like explain who i am like denzel said because it's almost exhausting and i know that people won't ever understand i feel like and i'm i'm a big believer in this probably just a conspiracy theorist to me i feel like people know what they do like Mm. i feel like when people appropriate our culture they know that it's mockery like i think Mm. they know that they're appropriating our culture like I, I genuinely, I, and that's like I said, I'm a bit, I'm a bit skeptical. I'm very paranoid. I'm really a, I'm a very, I'm a big believer that people know what they're doing. Like mm-hmm. it's not like they try to like when people act like, oh, I didn't know that this was offensive. Like I, I just, I just don't believe that most of the time. So as far as educating people, I feel like we've educated them enough. Um, mm-hmm. If anything, education was taken away from us. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's always like this thing where like the responsibility lot is always placed on the victim. And this is something that one of my Pan-African Studies um, teacher taught me is like, be careful about putting the blame or the responsibility on the victim. And in this case, I feel like black people are always the victim in the sense of like culture, uh, cultural appropriation. So I don't think that it's our responsibility to educate non-black people on something about the culture. I, I just don't think that it's our responsibility. And I feel like we've been educating them long enough. Um, so they're either going to get it or not. So yeah, I don't, I don't, how I feel about it is that it's not our responsibility. I have a white teacher who was like, she goes to classes to unlearn white supremacy. She's taking that step on her own to unlearn something that she knows is very dangerous to her black students or black people or not, or people of color. So you have to take that responsibility on your own. That's just like with me. I'm going to take that, that step to learn or to educate myself on the culture if you check me i'm going to take that responsibility a lot of times we'll check people we'll call out people like the kardashians for a cultural appropriation and we'll still see them turn around and and and, and do the same thing we'll still mm-hmm. see corporations and 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 these big fashion um people still mock and, and appropriate our culture we'll still we'll still see it after we've went on our rants on social media after we called them out they'll still do it so it's kind of like at this point it's like they're choosing to not listen you know they're mm-hmm. choosing to not um, take action on their own. They're choosing not, not to take that step after I've corrected them. Um, so at this point, I do. I don't feel like it's our responsibility to educate. I feel like it's our, our responsibility to be black, to um, to preserve our culture, um, to continue being the trailblazers that we are as a as a race, as a people, um, and to not not water ourselves down. As and I'm going to shut up really soon. But as Lavencia as Lavencia said, I don't believe in cold switching. I used to cold switch all the time. But in this, me being in graduate school, me being as old as I am now. I'm like, well, I'm so old. But anyway, I'm not code switching. I'm not I'm not doing it because like like Lavincia said, we study um 
Tom Sawyer, whatever, the, Mark Twain, you mm -hmm. know, uh, American, American, American country slang, whatever. We study that kind of stuff, but we don't study Toni Morrison or Zora Neale Hurston yeah. or stuff like that. We mm -hmm. don't study these black writers who talk about black country slang. We don't study that kind of mm -hmm. stuff when we should. We should study Ebonics because it's a, it's almost us. like its own, it's, it's us. It's, it's us. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I don't feel like it's our responsibility to educate non-black people. We've done it already. So, it's, it's your turn, non-black people, to take that stuff to educate yourself. So, yeah. Well, can I add something just one yeah. second? I got Let some me, good shit yeah. going right here. Go <laughs> on with it. Virus. Go on add to it. White folks, why do we take white folks' culture so seriously? Mm -hmm. Oh, Irish, we got Irish shit, we got Italian shit, but when it comes to black folks, our culture is almost like a novelty mm. to them. It, it's like, and, and we do this all the time, like we have... Um, people want to just research the cultures and they don't take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. They just do it because, oh, I we like tacos. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go to Mexico because I like tacos. Mm. And it's like, that's people's fucking livelihood. That's what they ate. Yeah. And you over here talking about some... Oh, because it, it's just a little shit. Or like Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Mex Real Mexicans don't even celebrate that shit. <laughs> so we, we... And it's just an excuse for Americans to party. And get drunk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, so I don't even understand, like, I don't understand why white people can't get it through their head. Or just non-black people, period. Because they even t try to talk like us now. Because yeah. they think it's cool. and But that's just our our way of life. So, and if yeah. you spend your time trying to educate everybody else, you're, you're missing out on the fact that we all still have so much to, to learn. learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you jump around and like, okay, I'm, 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 super, I'm representing my whole race. I'm going to corporate America and I'm about to change it and educate all these non-black people. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got your homie down the street that you don't even tell this type of stuff to. Mm -hmm. But when you, get around, when you get in a room full of non-black people, now it's like, I got so much to show. Look at my degrees, da da da, da. Mm -hmm. Your brother, who you grew up with, is suffering. And you have nothing to give to him because you don't feel like he needs to learn about or be educated because you're so busy trying to get in the room with the next big non-black person. Mm -hmm. And there's something else I wanted to say, stop letting everybody come to the cookout. Yes. Over the, I think yes. that's kind of been like a trend. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you got a ticket to the cookout. She could come to the cookout. Why? They got their own cookouts that you cannot get into. Mm -hmm. That you yep. literally, you don't even know that is an invitation out there. But every time you go on the internet, here comes somebody else that's non-black getting invited to the cookout. Mm -hmm. And that's really weird because, again, I, I think that, yes, it is a beautiful thing to see diversity and inclusion. And inclusion. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when, wh where can we go that is just us? Where can mm -hmm. we go that is just us? Where can we go where we can kick back and just be ourselves and nobody got to put on this um, this voice or this face or whatever it cares to be? Most of the time, we can't get around each other and just be mm -hmm. as ourselves because we got, we got all this non-black stuff in our own head that we need to unlearn. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's too much time wasted that we have been trying to educate them and trying to get educated by them. Mm -hmm. It, and we have a lot of unlearning to do, so I can't waste time on trying to educate somebody that I already know most of the time you look at me as your enemy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to educate my enemy right. on nothing. I'm feeling that. Or they look at us as inferior sometimes in mm -hmm. some cases, so it's almost like, oh, if you l already look at somebody as inferior, or you don't see uh, educational or intellectual value to that person as they sometimes look at black people, it's almost like, Oh, okay, I heard you, and it's almost like ignoring mm -hmm. um, what you're saying because it's like, well, black people subconsciously, I feel like some people might feel, some groups, non-black groups might feel like, well, black people, we've been taught that they're not smart. We've been taught that they're not intellectual. They're not capable of being intellectual beings. So it's like what you're saying to me, it's like you can't educate me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like a subconscious thing where it's like I can't really receive this because your people is are not educated. You're not educated people. So it's like this resistance that I think some non-black groups have towards us. Mm -hmm. So even when we try to educate, it's like a resistance. So I don't, I don't know. But anyway, I just mm -hmm. want to say that. Got something you want to? Um, I'm going to just say, I feel, personally, I feel like you will never be able to understand my experience if you've never experienced what I experienced. Mm -hmm. So me teaching you will do what for you? Because you'll never, you'll never be able to understand what I have to go through 
or what I've been through or what my people been through or what they're going to continue to go through even after I'm gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, you'll never get it if you never going to go through it or never going to see it. Like, mm -hmm. that's just how I feel. So, no, I feel like it's not our responsibility to teach other non-black people about us. But I just feel like you if you're never going to understand, why explain it? Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Well, can I raise the stakes real quick? Because... Sure. Well, my grandma, she is from the Philippines, straight up from the Philippines, came to this country, I don't know, like 50 years ago or some shit, I don't know. But um, I'm taking care of her right now, I'm her caregiver, and I, when I talk to her, I can tell that there's some shit that white folks told her mm -hmm. about the black community. Like, I remember one time when I was like 11 or something, I came over to see her. And she said, don't think that you have to, um, you know, act hood mm. to be accepted. I'm like, Grandma, what the fuck is you talking about? What the fuck is you talking about? And so, and like, and I, and I love her. I love, that's my grandma. You know, I can't change that. And there's some, it's exhausting having to teach her all this shit. Oh, wow. But sometimes, like, in a situation like that, I feel like you got to be willing just to reach like a level of understanding mm -hmm. so she could see my side, but also I could see her side of things. Right. Cause like the stop Asian hate thing, I don't, mm -hmm. even though I am partially Asian, sometimes I don't feel so connected to that cause. Mm -hmm. Cause I was raised by black folks and like there was a murder in New York city and it was a guy who was crazy and it was a black guy that killed this Asian woman. And I said, I don't think this was racially motivated. Mm -hmm. It just don't sound right for black folks to kill another race of a person. Hell, we in the same motherfucking boat. Well, Asian folks, I feel like they in a better boat than us. Because they, white folks is more willing to accept an Asian person than a black person. We going to be real. But I, I think there are certain nuances to that. Being like, especially like you're a mixed race person and... You you have this person that you want to love that you love and you want to connect to, but you got to be willing to put in that work a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can I can I just I know I've been talking. Can I just say really quick? I I well I don't think that it's our responsibility to educate. I do think that we it is our responsibility to call out and check at the door. You know because I think for sometimes it's almost like. I know for me it's so quick to let stuff like slide by like mm -hmm. microaggressions and like pat like mm -hmm. passive aggressive stuff and you know little stuff like you know and it's like well I don't want to seem like for me it's almost like I always tell myself like I don't want to seem like the aggressive black girl mm -hmm. I don't want to seem yeah. like the angry black girl mm -hmm. and I'm like but you're denying your own needs you're denying yeah. your own identity mm -hmm. you're denying what you know to be right so it's like don't deny that just to make these people somebody else comfortable so i right. feel like it is our responsibility because one thing about other racial groups and other ethnicities they're going to check yeah, they're, they're going to check they, you they speak period they're going to say oh mm -hmm. don't wear those feathers on your head mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. don't don't do this with uh that Sabaro, whatever it's called Sabaro, Sabaro, yes Sabaro. Um, <laughs> can i borrow some money but um they're going to check they're going to call it out and they're going to do it in the most respectful manner sometimes they're going to get disrespectful but i feel mm -hmm. like what sometimes with some black people with some of us is like we tiptoe around things like oh they didn't mean it we are we're always mm -hmm. making excuses and yeah. i just feel like it's so important to check it at the door like don't just let it happen and just breeze by you and that's what i'm learning like i said being one of the only black persons in this mfa program because there's a lot of microaggressions even though they say oh diversity and inclusion there's a lot of microaggressions mm -hmm. that i that yep. I pick up on it's like mm -hmm. hey nope nope don't do that so just making sure to check it at the door you don't have to educate them but check it at the door and don't yeah. don't let people get away with disrespecting you or um our culture so mm -hmm. yeah I have to nothing them? to add. Yeah, they, no, they, they say probably. it all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing. I'm glad that I had this panel right here because these are the conversations that I've been looking for. Like literally, everybody has their own perspective and I love it. A lot of times people get on here and they want to outdo each other. Mm -hmm. Y'all are giving it straight how you feel it. Mm -hmm. um, my perspective on it is I'm for educating non-black people. The mm -hmm. reason why I'm for it is because I personally feel like if you be realistic, black people need to be educated. Yes, right? yes, sure. And it's along the lines of what you said. Mm -hmm. You know, I was 23 years old before I did, before I realized that I was letting bullshit come out my mouth. Mm -hmm. I would sit there and say, man, as a black girl, 
as a dark black girl, man, you look good. Mm. Mm. At no point did anybody of my own race right. check me and say, bro, do you not realize what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I was 23 years old That's still not... saying that shit. Mm. Wow. Now I'm sitting there putting this out that because you're dark skin, mm -hmm. technically, mm -hmm. You're the ugly one. Mm -hmm. wow. The lighter you are, mm -hmm. the better looking you are. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole red bomb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But black people were saying this, but we thought it was cool. It's the trend. Mm -hmm. And it's a compliment to you because, you know, I'm saying you're the pretty dark one. I would even come behind that to defend that bullshit and say, all right, man, y'all taking it a little too far, mm -hmm. but let's be realistic. Yep. Name me five dark skinned black women that look good. Yeah. I didn't even realize that I was going further and further, tearing my own people down. Uh -huh. This is me saying this shit. Mm -hmm. So I realized I needed to be educated, mm -hmm. along with a lot of other brothers. I'm for educating everyone because yeah. we all got room to grow. And I just mm -hmm. personally feel like this. Yeah, I don't think that black, I mean, non-black people will ever understand what it is to be black. Just the same way we will never understand what it is to be you know, whatever you are, white mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. But sometimes I, I do think that you can get through to certain people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just on a job recently and a white guy was doing the exact same job I was doing. And he was saying, I had a conversation with my wife over meeting you. Um, where is he? He's from Ohio, southern part of Ohio. But he was saying, after meeting you, I felt comfortable talking to you. And I told my wife, baby, I want to have a conversation with this guy. I feel like that, you know, when I talk to him, we can have open conversation. And his wife told him, you better not do it. You're going to get yourself fired. You might say some shit that he's not going to appreciate and you get yourself fired. So anyway, he wanted to talk about the sports world. These athletes not standing for the national anthem. Mm -hmm. His whole thing, he wanted to go down this field of, you know, I just don't think it's right. I'm a patriot. And so this is what I told him. I said, well, this is my thing. Do you have a problem with why they're doing it or do you have a problem with black people just stepping up saying anything mm -hmm. he said well no nah, i mean i just think that you know when it comes to these games and it's the national anthem you should have respect i said and i agree you should have respect so do me a favor the same energy you have when it comes to black people boycotting that national anthem because of other causes when they selling hot dogs when they selling beer popcorn Boycott it. Don't watch football no more. Mm -hmm. Because it's a disrespect, right? Mm -hmm. You want people to have a hand over their heart. You want them to be quiet. So when they're selling hot dogs, popcorn, and making money, mm -hmm. I want you to not support sports. He was like, I never thought about that. You're right. See, because now I want to put the light on. You really just want us to shut up and dribble. Yeah, yeah. Run, that, run that ball. Mm -hmm. Smack the ball. Whatever it is that we're, we excel in, you want mm -hmm. us to do that. Mm -hmm. So he had, to, he had to kind of think about it. And then I also told him, I said, that fucking national anthem that y'all act like is really something. My old boss used to be a pro football player. He used to be a pro football player. And I asked him the question. I said, I Googled something. And I just want to know if it's true. The NFL receives money to make y'all go out on the field and participate in the national anthem. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all knew that yeah, or not. Wow. But when these athletes go out there, it's because they're getting paid from the government. Not the athletes, the teams right. are getting paid. I asked him, what did y'all used to do when you played football? He said, shit, we used to sit in the locker room. We ain't give a fuck about that. <laughs> well, we, in the back. we don't even realize that this didn't take place until the early 2000s wow. when they started doing this. The early 2000s. So when you're talking this patriotic, this, that, and other, it's bullshit. You don't even know your own fucking history. So when I put this in your face, now you realize, shit, maybe I need to pay attention to what these athletes are stepping up and actually boycotting out mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Why they're taking a the knee and talking about these injustices of the world. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that. But how many black people know that too? True. Mm -hmm. I had to also break it down to him along with another black brother. Bruh. Francis Scott Keys wrote that fucking national anthem. It does not mean the same thing to black people as it do other non-black people. He had fucking slaves. <laughs> Land of the free, home of the brave. He wasn't talking about nobody that looked like me because he had fucking slaves. But how many black people know that as well? How many Hispanics know that? How many white people know that? 
I don't want to just be shitting on black people because this is a everybody conversation. Mm -hmm. But let's be realistic. We do know that this to be a fact. Well, I think it's a mm -hmm. fact, so I'm not going to say. But white people know more about black history than black people. Yeah, for sure. We know the basic shit. But they know the deep. They know the yeah. deep the real stuff shit. that's not in the book. Yeah. They study that. Mm -hmm. And the sad part about it is we have the knowledge that's put out there and most of us don't even want yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. So I personally feel like there's room for everybody to grow and I'm all for educating all races. Mm -hmm. You know, com it, it only will stop when it comes to conversations being had. Real uncomfortable conversations. And I get the feeling of it's 2022. We should not have to keep doing this shit. Mm -hmm. We should not. But until we are willing to step up and support each other in a way to mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. that part of it doesn't matter, right. we have to still do this. Mm -hmm. You got to play that's coming. Mm -hmm. Everybody that looks like you should be buying a ticket. Right? Mm -hmm. The minute you announce it, it <laughs> should be sold the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Your city alone should have that shit to where you like, damn. Mm -hmm. We got to add a show. Yep. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, mm -hmm. it's not like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm for educate. Because again, when I say educate, it can be. It ain't just about strictly race. No. What about support? Mm -hmm. What about respect? Mm -hmm. Again, I pride my show in not allowing men to get up here calling women bitches and hoes. Mm -hmm. You too fucking old to be doing that goofy shit. Mm -hmm. But guys think it's cool. True. Women allow it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If y'all don't put an end to it. And then I don't say nothing. The trend keeps going right. So I'm for educating all people. Because then if, if I don't stop Denzel from this bullshit trend, somebody that doesn't look like Denzel, they're going to think, hey, how you doing? And they feel like they can call you that. Right. No, I'm going to step up before she even slapped the shit out of you. Because that's when she'll come next. She slapped the shit out of you. I'm going to jump in there and let it be known. We don't play that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm all for educating all. Not to say you're wrong because you feel like, mm -hmm. if you feel like, you know, no, I'm not for it. But I do feel like it's room for it and it should continue because, again, we all have room to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else want to throw something out? This is a good flow right now. I like I wanna, this shit. I want to say, um, like, for me, like, being out there in Los Angeles, like, I've, I've always been around, like, Latinx, Hispanic people. Like, I've always been, but I, I, I try to ask questions. Like, I'm mm -hmm. try, I'm always, like, ask, like, okay, so what, especially if, like you said, I know sometimes I can be ignorant, too, as a black mm -hmm. person. Like, even growing up, you know what I'm saying, I would say a lot of, a lot of, disrespectful inappropriate stuff because i didn't know any better like that was just the culture like colorism saying little stuff about asian people not even noticing what i was doing like even towards my own people even black people in the diaspora like you have african people caribbean people sometimes there was a lot of bad things that we said about each other like oh you dress good for a haitian or oh african booty scratcher stuff like i mean it's yeah. funny it was funny growing up but it's like some people <laughs> <laughs> what happened <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, seriously yeah. but like that was like a lot of stuff that a lot of black americans would make fun of and it's like i know Afri black africans they probably have a perception about black americans and it's like even within that there's a lot of stuff that we need to educate each other on you know what i'm saying and so that I feel like it's so important to ask questions and like you said like being responsible and being like accountable because yeah. there's a lot of things that I I know for me that I'm learning too and I have to ask those questions so I like what you said about the black community has a responsibility to educate one another yeah, and not be offended you know what I'm saying because I feel like sometimes when you try to educate each other it's like oh you think you better than me you think you know and it's mm -hmm. like it's not about that y'all it's we it's a collaboration we all just trying to educate each other so oh can I get can I get in on this because okay. I want to ask y'all a question I, I want I want y'all perspective <laughs> on this mm -hmm. I had this conversation what you said about people take it as oh you think you better than me what's wrong with goddamn saying yeah I, I am <laughs> what's wrong with that <laughs> because if, and, and this is why I say that if you're educating me and I choose to still be ignorant mm -hmm. then, then are you or are you not better than me mm -hmm. I'm choosing to still have this ignorant mindset mm -hmm. but you know everybody oh you know you can't really say no goddamn it I am mm -hmm. I am you done. I'm not. Yeah. I'm choosing to get the this. knowledge. I mean, let, let's talk about it, you know. And no matter how much you explain it to certain, and it ain't just black people, mm -hmm. but it's everybody. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with saying that? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I am better. When you see somebody mind it, like, yeah. I don't what's know wrong if there's anything it? wrong with it. And I, I would say this, though. I'm never going to use the word better mm -hmm. because that, to me, gives you the idea that you can compare to me, period. For me, 
I'm not trying to be better than right. Savion. I'm trying to be the best version of Denzel. Mm-hmm. So I always look at it like if I if you say you think you better be, no, I'm just trying to be the best me. That's it. I'm not trying. Mm-hmm. If I come to you as a man to teach you something, you cho- like you say, if you choose to ignore it, that's your ignorance. Right. But I know there was a point in my life when I was in, in that same boat. Mm-hmm. And there's there's always going to be somebody that has a different um, aspect or perspective of life than you or have some more knowledge in certain areas, but nobody is better than the next person because they have knowledge, mm-hmm. in my opinion, because there's something that you know that I don't know, and then there's something that I, don't, I know that you don't know. So I don't know if it's a, a sense of comparison. It might just be at that time I'm not willing or open enough to receive what you're giving me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that can be true across the board. But I don't know if I would say I'm better than you because I, I go back to my original point. I don't even think you can compare to me. Just like I can't compare to you. You mm-hmm. live in your own life. I'm living my own life. So I'm just hoping that you be the best version of yourself. And I hope you wish that for me too. That's how I look at it. That's some powerful mm-hmm. shit, brother. So, uh, <laughs> cameraman, if you can, clip that shit up as if I said it. Yeah, that's Not him. <laughs> Give it to In case I'm it go viral. <laughs> that's some good shit right there. I like that, though. Because we can't compare it to each other, man. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, I look at all of y'all up here as kings, queens, goddess, gods, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm just hoping that as you on your journey, and if I have something to offer to you and you take it, great. If not, I'm going to keep moving. Right. And never even think. Now I know next time you'll never get the opportunity mm-hmm. to disrespect my knowledge ever. Mm-hmm. So I won't even open my mouth again. But I offer it to you. I give it to you, and if, like, I hope you take it and, and use it. That's it. Respect the journey. Respect the journey. Respect the journey. Mm-hmm. I, I and I think like somebody who I, I think I'm that person that's checking my ego mm-hmm. because. Um, I think that's what separates humans from the rest of everybody, you know, animals and whatnot, Mm -hmm. is this thing called ego. And, you know, I think that's what also makes us hellbound sometimes. And it binds us. And I think when we say things like that, we're binding ourselves Mm -hmm. instead of just saying, you know what, fuck it, you don't want to hear what I'm trying to say. I'm just going on and, you know, do what I got to do. Because... You know, sometimes they not there yet. Yeah. They just not there. And you just, and I'm, I'm having to learn this because I'm the type of person, if you're not trying to hear what I'm saying, I'm going to make you hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to force you to hear what the fuck I got I to say. But, but I just say like, it's always a pride thing mm-hmm. and you got to just come from a level of understanding that they're not letting go of their ego to receive yeah. something yeah. so once you let that go and you know that's why like um when people experience ego death mm-hmm. that's probably the most receptive time and they have these realizations mm-hmm. but that ego had to fall off first yeah. yeah and i think a big thing that i'm learning now lavencia mm-hmm. is i don't have anything i need to protect or defend mm-hmm. like when I, especially when i get around my people you know mm-hmm. why is it that when we walk around our people we got a meme mug we mm-hmm. got to like oh they over there or da 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 i i feel like when i get around my people this is my time i want to show my true self i'm mm-hmm. looking to learn from will i'm looking to learn from savion and so forth whatever the case may be instead of coming in with that attitude of who they think they is mm-hmm. that's your brother that's yeah. your sister that's somebody that literally you should be able to look up and say, I know you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we, we get all these facades, we get all this ego, and the first thing that you gotta get rid of when you're trying to actually educate the culture and when you're trying to inform the culture is, I gotta get rid of myself in some ways. Mm-hmm. I gotta get out of these biases that I picked up along the way. I gotta, I gotta understand that, like you're saying, it's not good to be a colorist and think that a light-skinned girl automatically qualifies as to be the qualifies her to be the most beautiful woman in the room. Mm -hmm. You gotta get rid of that before you start talking about educating anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, you literally gotta sit down and say, what, I'm 28, there's 28 years of bullshit in me at some Mm -hmm. point, you know what I'm saying? And until I actively sit down and be like, before I try to teach anybody, whether it's black, white, Latino, whatever the case be, let me educate myself. Mm -hmm. Let me get around the right people that are respecting the journey that's trying to learn stuff da 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 whatever the case may be and then then yes once you got some knowledge it is your duty to spread it because you can't keep it to yourself but a lot of people try to acquire knowledge and they have it let their ego go mm-hmm. so automatically you got one degree under your belt and now you feel like you you are better than everybody else mm-hmm. or automatically 
I got I just built my own house, so now I gotta be better than everybody else. No, you just happen to get blessed. You happen mm -hmm. to get a little luck in your pocket. You mm -hmm. happen to shake the right hand, whatever it can be. Don't look down on somebody because of that. Mm -hmm. Let let that ego go. Now one thing that um studying philosophy for a very brief amount of time I've learned that I don't know nothing at all. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know. Cause it could blow my mind anytime. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's like yeah, again, like how do you how do you know what you know, mm. and how do you know if that to be factual? And you know what's crazy? I was I was meditating um, the other day, Levinsky. I said I I only know something when I'm able to teach it mm. to a child. Mm -hmm. mm. When I can look at my almost two year old daughter and break it down to the simplest denominator, mm -hmm. that's when I know mm -hmm. I know it. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we get frustrated when we got to teach a child something yeah. mm -hmm. because you have to be able to say A plus B equals C. Two plus two equal four, and why? Because that child is going to ask you, da da da, da and most of the time you get frustrated because you really don't know what you're talking about. If Johnny had five <laughs> apples, you <laughs> see that child has at the table. Like, hey, but just explain it a little bit better. But oftentimes you get you get that pride in your head, mm -hmm. you get all those things, and then you let your own insecurity scream for you, mm -hmm. and you remember that trauma that your mama was screaming at you at the table, mm -hmm. and you just repeat those cycles. That's one thing I try to avoid all the time in the classroom because like, I have those moments where it's like, I can't explain why, but that's why it is, and that's just the way it's going to be. But then they're like, Mr. St. John, then why are you teaching it to us if it's that's what I was like? Because that's what's in the book. That's what y'all got to learn. Y'all in my class, just learn it. So I understand that completely, but then at the same time, it's just like, when you don't have that answer to why, mm -hmm. then where, where do they go to find that answer? And then like with being a teacher it kind of hurts when they don't find it from you because that's your job to teach it to them but when they learn it from say you know the dude down the street or they learn it from uncle that they see every few months it's like dang and then when they bring that behavior back to the school you wonder like why you act like that why are you bringing that behavior here in public and it's like that's all they know mm -hmm. so and a lot of times i don't know if i i always have the why but I'm I'm that type of teacher and, and I guess director and Mia can attest to this too as our co-director is all we can kind of give you is this is um this is what I always say this is the option for you this is something that I want to kind of teach you the not necessarily give you the answer but I want to teach you the process of how to mm -hmm. find your own answers mm -hmm. yeah. because that's way more important than me just telling you this is what it is and that's typically the education system mm -hmm. yeah. all we do is just get the information it's our job to regurgitate it on the test and hopefully we pass mm -hmm. but real education is let's sit down and figure out how we can collaboratively get to the end result mm -hmm. it, the process is more important than the product in mm -hmm. real education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me throw this out to y'all. There's a lot of white people who have went viral for taking from black culture. Oh yeah, we've seen mm -hmm. the Just girls the at the wedding drinking the beer and they rapping oh, the little yeah. baby song. Mm -hmm. And to your point, people are all they invited to the barbecue. Mm -hmm. Automatically. So we do know that when they take from black culture, you know they go viral. We could do the exact same shit. Nobody gives a fuck. You supposed to know it because you know that's what y'all listen to. Mm -hmm. they, you know that's that's the approach to what people do. Mm -hmm. Do y'all ever see a scenario to where you educate someone that's genuine and they use their influence to help push black culture forward or put it where it needs to be? Mm -hmm. Crickets on this mm -hmm. one. Oh, I gave y'all some good shit? Okay, okay, clap it up for your boy, okay? I, I'll say this, Will. Do we have, this is crazy, Will, that you, do we have outside support? Sure. And do we accept it? Absolutely. I think I would be dumb not to accept some outside support. However, do I feel like us, and I'm not speaking individually, because of course I have some great non-black people in my life, but collectively as a group, have we ever received anything of value from a non-black person for the culture? No. That, that really said, look, we're about to highlight, because most of the time, unfortunately, there is always a motive behind supporting mm -hmm. the culture. Yep. And a lot of times, I just want to get to the cookout so I can take over the cookout. Mm -hmm. yeah. And next year, we're going to have raisins in a damn um, potato, salad. potato salad. We ain't have raisins in the potato salads until we gave free invitations to everybody. Mm -hmm. Goddamn so, raisins. So why do you got raisins in the potato <laughs> salad? But what I'm saying is, it's difficult to kind of say yeah, we, we've had, yeah, because of course, 
and we can probably name a few people in your personal life that has helped you tremendously, whether it was a teacher, whether it was a neighbor, whatever it can be, but collectively, I don't think I can personally think of anybody or any group of somebodies that have helped push the black culture forward. And then I, I, it just makes me think, most of the time when we even talk about black culture, a lot of times it's rooted in, it's rooted in this idea of, for instance, we start black culture with what happened after slavery. And for me, if that's all we talking about, everything's going to look good to us. My, I hate when people say our ancestors will be so proud. We still damn near slaves to this day. We just get to wear some, um, some J's. We still slaves to this day. So my biggest thing is how can we say that there's been anybody that's non-black that's pushed us forward when we pulled ourselves by our boot, up by our bootstraps? Mm -hmm. Everything that black culture is that we deem black culture, we've had to do it ourselves. We've had to fight for ourselves. We had to fight to get on, on stages like this. Like mm -hmm. nobody gave us this. We had to fight for this. Yeah. Even we just celebrated Juneteenth, which is cool, clap it up, we got a federal holiday, but at the end of the day, we had to fight for that shit too. Mm -hmm. Just to get recognized. So I, it's hard and I, I guess that made me mad, I guess. But <laughs> I like that. I like that. That pisses me off because we do still feel like we have to get somebody to help us push the culture forward. Right. How? Mm -hmm. When act actually American culture is nothing but black culture, period. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. It's not lit until a black person do it. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. Music don't sound good until a black person sing it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dance don't look good until we do it. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody TikToking until we was TikToking. Mm -hmm. And now everybody rocking their hips. So that's my biggest thing. So I, I don't even, and, and I think that goes back to the original question. I don't care to educate you because you've never cared to educate me. Mm -hmm. So, and then once I get the education, you're going to try to change the, now you go, once I get it, now you're going to try to move the finish line. Or once I start making progress, now it's like, no, you don't just need one master's, you need five master's to get. So it's just, you're going to piss me off anyway. So yeah. I'm more involved with, like we said, I'm more involved with educating us. And then if you get it while we getting it, well, kudos, brother, you got it. You know, else? The only, only, only time I'm gonna say that a white person did some shit for me is if they pay me my reparations. And that's just paying oh. back what we supposed to get paid. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm still waiting for my 40 acres and a mule cause I ain't get that shit yet. Mm -hmm. Neither did my my grandma, my great, great grandma. grandparents, great great parents, not damn one of them got 40 acres and a, uh, a damn mule. I'm trying mm -hmm. not to cuss y'all, y'all. <laughs> no, you can let it ride, let it ride. <laughs> that, that's the beauty of it, that, that emotion. That's the beauty of the podcast. So let it ride. And it's like, we'll have this country in a palm of our hands mm -hmm. if they if they gave it to us. But they're just like, no, because they know what the fuck going to happen if we had it in a, in the palm of our hands. Well, they're afraid that we're going to do what they did to us. But we ain't even on that. I mean, we not on we that. Not that. I saw something today. It was like Fargo or something. And they said something about... Uh, this white person said that black people are typically more tapped into their spirit and their emotions. And I'm like, there's some level of truth to that. Mm -hmm. But she started getting weird. But I think that, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, yes, even if black people did run this country, and I mean, for real, for real, own this country, not no, like, mm -hmm. you know, Puppet. no puppets in place. You know, you know what I'm saying? I think we would be able to gives this country a lot of love and turn like seriously mm -hmm. turn some things around for the next generation that comes after us won't have to deal with the shit that we had to deal with. Hmm. That's a deep ass conversation. Uh, I'm telling you, this is this <laughs> some beautiful Will stuff right here, man. This is some beautiful stuff. Anybody else want to add to that? Because you know I got some more questions that I want to throw out there to y'all. Nobody? Nobody? Okay, cool. On the side of the fence that you all are standing on, do any of you take offense when Hispanics use the N word? Mm. Hell yes. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we grew up with this we shit. We grew up, yeah. Yeah. And it didn't I didn't get checked on that until my girlfriend who's from Jax, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, cause I told her I grew up with all Hispanics. Like some of my closest friends are Hispanic, so of course I always heard them slip nigga in. And because it's normal for us, oh, okay, I, I, I kind of tweak a little bit, be like, oh, why you just slipped that in? But I'm like, all right, cool. 
but I have never been allowed to even use the word spick around yeah. in Hispanic, mm -hmm. ever. They would check me. So if I accidentally call a Puerto Rican a Mexican, oh, they get mad. They ready to beat my ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I told Candy that, and she was like, "Well, do you ever, like, do you ever say something?" And I said, "Sometimes, but most of the time, I do let it slide." But I, I, I do have to now start challenging. And again, I do agree with what you're saying earlier about we don't have to educate them, but we do have to inform them. Mm -hmm. That shit not cool. And I do want to, I do, I get on this podcast, I want to hold myself accountable with that. Like, it, I don't know if I'm necessarily saying it's gatekeeping or anything, but I am going to check it right there because, yeah, I'm I'm the cool guy. I'm not going to pop off, but you might run into the wrong person. And because I care about you as a friend and, or whatever the case be, I do want to inform you so you won't put yourself in an effed up situation. Right. Mm -hmm. So, And we were taught, so I know you all are from out of town, but we, where we grew up at, is predominantly Hispanic, mm -hmm. but we actually kind of, I guess you could say we were taught like we're we're the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. that whole black and brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So growing up hearing this, I ain't never was like, yeah. you said what, nigga? Man, <laughs> it was just like, yeah, you're one of us. You understand? It, it really wasn't a big thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I was grown before I realized, oh no, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, it's like, no, we the same. Mm -hmm. But now that the bullshit is going on, mm -hmm. y'all ain't stepping up saying, that's foul. Mm -hmm. How could y'all do that to our brothers and sisters? That's, mm -hmm. that's y'all issue. Mm -hmm. It's y'all issue. Right. Everybody separates themselves mm -hmm. when it comes to black issues. Mm -hmm. So then I realized at that point, Oh no no no! Yeah. Everybody needs to be checked mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Ain't no more. Be in the well, we yeah. grew, I don't give a damn that we grew up allowing this. Mm -hmm. I got enough sense to stop it now. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. I got mm -hmm. Enough sense to stop it right. now. Yeah. You know, if if we can roll with the well, you know, we grew up and that was the okay, cool. Mm -hmm. But then I'm gonna start saying some of these words that you don't like. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start criticizing people in your family. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna start. Everything that I can jump on, I'm gonna start. Then that's gonna be well, nah, bro. You do, you're going too far. Mm -hmm. well, treat me with the same respect that's that you want me to mm -hmm. treat you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's I was just curious about that because I, I, again, where we grew up, it was like we was the same. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I got older and started to realize, you know, because I was never a big news watcher. Mm -hmm. If it ain't happening in my city, I ain't mm -hmm. really giving a damn about what's <laughs> that shit happening down there. They, oh, a mass shooting and such and such. <laughs> They ain't gonna bring that shit down this way. So, it was like, <laughs> but now that you get older, and you get enough sense to say, like, damn, you know, I, I really felt that, like, mm -hmm. that's fucked up, and I couldn't imagine going through that. Now you start to look at the world a lot different. Now you mm -hmm. start to realize, damn, these same folks that I was calling my, and not just you know Hispanics, but white people as well. Everybody that you was dapping up and you know, talking, oh man, you got a little soul to you because mm -hmm. they can sing and hit a little note. Please. No, fuck that. <laughs> sound black. Fuck that. Yeah. We quick to say that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I just was curious to know what y'all thoughts and opinions or you know, how that made y'all feel. You know? Well, if they have privilege, they gonna use it and mm -hmm. they'll leave yeah. your black ass they behind. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'ma pose a question. Kendrick Lamar said it best, when shit hits the fan, is you still a fan? Mm -hmm. Cause most of the time they not. No. They not. It, cause and I don't be real, cause it's gonna be the same for us too. If I had to choose between me or you, I'ma choose me. Mm -hmm. And that's what they gonna do. So we have to choose ourselves and say, "Hey, that shit ain't cool. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to stop that." That's a fact. I think this was beautiful here. <laughs> this was beautiful. Like, I, I'm really happy about this episode. Like, y'all might not be able to tell like that, but literally, like, I, I prided myself in making a podcast where you can have real everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. And my goal, be, I mean, I literally sit down every day and I write something that, oh, I want to talk about this. I want. But it'd be so hard to get the right group of people. Mm -hmm. I'd be having some of the most amazing topics, mm -hmm. but to get the right group mm -hmm. and people that's willing to express themselves. It's mm -hmm. always, well, you know, because I'm in a corporate setting. I can't. Mm -hmm. But y'all on social media talking about the latest rap. Mm -hmm. Y'all on there talking about what Beyonce said in her new song. Like, mm -hmm. What happened to your corporate job? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have thoughts and opinions outside of work. So to see y'all get out here, be young and, and have perspective, even if it ain't, you know, all the same. Like, I love it. It really makes me happy. And that's what this platform is built on. Everyday conversation and perspectives. Moving the culture forward. Right. 
Right. This is how it starts. So, I mean, I, I'm just over here, you know, I'm in my own little world, but I, I'm in here smiling like, this, this is it for me, man. I, I really I really appreciate y'all actually coming on this platform and giving y'all perspective. So I, I definitely want to thank y'all because everything y'all are giving is helping my platform as well too. Mm -hmm. Switching it up a little bit, my brother, you have a concert coming. You got a concert coming. You all are a part of it. I would love for y'all to tell me why is heavy needed? Mm. Mm. Wow. Well, we just jumped Ooh, in. She looked like she was excited. She had because some good I stuff. I swear we <laughs> um, I'm going to go first. Well, can I go first? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I feel like heavy is needed because it teaches so many different lessons within the home, mm -hmm. but it also shows people that these are things that really happen individual like yes we are a family but individually we're all fighting like our own different things from this one family mm -hmm. and it could be whether you high or low we could all be at different levels mm -hmm. but we still one family but there's so many different lessons to learn mm -hmm. so heavy is much needed just because there's somebody in the world that's going through it and they need to learn and they need to see what they need to do to get through their situation, whether they're in their family, whether it's like heavy or not. Mm -hmm. But they still need to see like, oh, so this is this is real. Like what I'm going through is not just it's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's other people out here that's really going through something heavy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got to say. That's why it's needed. Okay. OK. OK. Yes. Yeah, so heavy is needed because. Um, is that the question? Heavy? Why heavy? Why okay. I'm like, okay, hold on. But um, heavy is needed because, as we talked about earlier about educating ourselves, that's what heavy does. It educates, it educates the black community, you know, because there's a lot of things in our own community that we need to be educated on that, and that we need to fix also. And heavy touches on that, that um, metaphor or that saying of swiping, sweeping things under the rug, literally, this rug that we're sitting on. But yeah, so I feel like it reveals like the secrets and like the things that that has become a um, a normal a, a norm in um, the black community that's not that's not um, healthy that's not beneficial to our journey as as a race. So I feel like the he like heavy as a production it reveals it's like a mirror to like educate and also fix things in our community that's very toxic and that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So like I said, it kind of ties back into, that's why it's needed because it ties back into what we said earlier about, we have a lot of things in our own community that we need to be, that we need to be educated on, that we need to fix and heal and, um, and zoom in on. So that's why I think that heavy is very needed because that's, that's some, it represents a dysfunctional black family. Um, which a lot of us are going through. I know I have. I came from a very dysfunctional family, so it's it's very very deep and it's very close to home for me. So it's needed because it allows me to heal. So I think that it's needed because it you know educates and it heals and so on and so forth. One of the biggest words that you just said was heal, mm -hmm. and I feel like heavy is definitely a healing experience from both being in the production versus watching the production versus just reading the production because mm -hmm. I. Because it also educates and it also sheds a light to the black community, to other races, to whoever is experiencing that, you know, interaction with Heavy um, as well. I would say that Heavy does highlight the bad things in the black community, but it also highlights some of the good things in the black community. Because how, not to give too much, but how the family still stick together throughout the whole play. Mm -hmm. Through thick and thin, through the good times, through the bad times, family was still there. And I mm -hmm. feel like in the black community, that's a big thing that... A lot of people don't get to explain or learn about or know about because everybody's family is different it's a mosaic so everybody's different piece makes mm -hmm. one big puzzle mm -hmm. but everybody's puzzle is different too mm -hmm. so but come see heavy come see, Definitely. Come see heavy oh it's my turn oh okay. well, you know we can't wait for you to get it <laughs> come, on now. come on i'm an opinionated person but we love it um art is spiritual yes you know so when we talk about plays and stuff, there's somebody in the audience that's going to resonate with this and it's going to bring forth that healing for them mm -hmm. just because they saw their story being told on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a beautiful thing about art 
period. And I think this is also very important because it's going to inspire somebody to take on their own shit, like write their own play, Mm -hmm. tell their own story or tell other people's stories because black stories need to be told. Mm -hmm. Black people need to be out here supporting, but black people need to be out here making this shit so other people can see and inspire others to do the same. Nope. No. What? I don't have anything to say. Okay, don't worry about it. I got something for all of y'all. I like to put people on the spot. Okay. My brother Denzel Mm -hmm. wrote this play. Mm -hmm. All of you came from out of town. Mm. What is it about Denzel and what he wrote that made you all buy into even being a part of this? Huh? Y'all ain't think I was gonna come with that. Huh? Okay. He held me against my will. Okay, right. okay. Um, <laughs> Blink twice. Gun. <laughs> this dude to the head. No. <laughs> to the but first time or the second time? Anytime. Anytime. For this time, for me, it was just the story. Like knowing that we started doing this thing back in college. Mm-hmm. Like them late nights, <laughs> early mornings, yeah. stressful test weeks, and all that. And now, like, everybody, like, pretty much, you know, we graduated, everybody in their own careers, we all matured. And the fact that we could do it for a public audience. Like, we was at a school, we was at a university, so yeah, come to class, oh, my, invite your professor. But now, mm-hmm. it's people walking down the street, oh, what y'all doing in there? Mm-hmm. We having a play. Well, what's that a play? Come, come, come on Friday, come on Saturday, whatever. We do the play and come see it. So it's a bigger audience, and it's a broader audience that we get to reach with this production. And as well as just the fact to act again. Like, mm. we've been in this pandemic for the mm. last two years. The world's been shut off. We ain't never been doing nothing. I went to school for theater, so I want to use my degree. Mm-hmm. So now that I get to do that and be with my friends and be with family with it, you couldn't say, I, I couldn't deny it. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I'll go then. <laughs> um, because I believe in That's my brother right there. Oh, and, you know, oh, I would want somebody to do the same for me. I, I would want somebody to believe that what I have going on is good. And I, and I believe that this play is going to do some good for this community. But I also feel like this is going to do good for the world. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody's going to leave and take it on with them and tell somebody else about this story. And so because I just have that firm belief that we need to be supporting each other. I mean, even then, this is my first production since COVID. And... I'm getting back into it, and I I haven't felt this happy in a long, long, long time. So, um, just the opportunity to travel, too. I love getting out of town, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I'm going to piggyback off what Lala LaVincia was saying. Um, yes, I'm extremely happy to be here and, like, soaking in this moment. But I can also say, like, just being in class with Denzel on campus, off campus, his dedication, his push, like the drive that he has, like, and then not only but the drive in him, but it's like, he, he got a drive in him, but if he see it in you, it's like, oh yeah, you, I need you, I'm doing this, so I see it in you, I got it in me, we finna put our brains together, and this what we got, Mm -hmm. so because of that, it's like, oh, you doing this, and you want me to be a part of it, okay, cool, but this is what I want to do too, so it's like, you know that. So you invited me. You want me to be a part of something that you have created that other people love. I love. You love. So it's like, how could you not? And then we in another state. We in another city yeah. with each other. Like, <laughs> we went to class together. Now we in another state and we grown. And we, come on. Come on. Come on. That's like, reunion, y'all. I had to be here. So, yeah. I'll go. Oh, shit. Y'all, come I'm on. losing my yeah. voice. Come on. <clears throat> um, I think what makes it special, that's the question, right? Mm-hmm. Special. Mm-hmm. What makes it special? I think what makes it special is that like we not honestly didn't choose this play. This play chose us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and going back from the beginning, doing it back in college and school, like our teacher picked Denzel's play to do. Mm-hmm. PJ picked it, so we were gonna do the play regardless. <laughs> Okay, but that's the that's like we were gonna right. do the play regardless. Like whether it was none of us read it, none of us had heard what it was about yet. We didn't know at the time. I didn't know what it was called. I learned shortly after, but we didn't know anything about the play. We just knew that Denzel wrote a play, PJ liked it, and we were gonna do it. And I think it was interesting that 
it kind of grew on us. We we grew with the play. I think that's what makes it not just special, but like mm -hmm. a monolith. Like mm -hmm. we have the playwright with us right now. Mm -hmm. Denzel is here. A lot of people do plays, the playwright dead and gone, mm -hmm. or they're so far removed from regular life that you can't contact them. Like mm -hmm. you, they can't come and show up and are, they, they're not willing to. Mm -hmm. Denzel is here. He's making live edits as we're going along. Might wake up tomorrow morning, he might be like, fuck this whole scene, I'm not feeling it. Let's oh do something else. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's all happening now. And I mm -hmm. think that's what makes it special about this play is that we all get to live through it with Denzel, with the changes. We get to see from three years ago what it looks like now. And I think mm -hmm. that's so cool because a lot of people don't get to reprise their role. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't get to see how they did it three years ago and compare it to now and be like, wow, I really mm -hmm. grew. Mm -hmm. Wow, my character changed in so many ways. So I, I just think that this yeah. play is mm -hmm. raw in its entirety. Like, it's raw. It makes our actors and our crew, even our crew, like, mm -hmm. LaVincia today, she's our, our light, our, our technical. technical director, and she wanted to do our exercise. Like, she was just like, I wanted to get up there and do what you guys were doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just feel like this whole production makes anybody that comes in contact with it feel like that. Mm -hmm. I always look forward to at the end of the play when someone comes up to me like, oh my God, this was such a great freaking show. Like I really took something away from it and I'll never forget Heavy. I always hear people tell me every single time, I cannot wait to see Heavy again. Mm -hmm. Still to this day, people who saw it from the very first show who haven't seen it, haven't seen part two, haven't mm -hmm. seen nothing since the first show, I cannot get Heavy out of my head. And, so and I always look forward did. to it. Hello. Yes. So I think that's what makes it Special. Yes, yes. Thank yes, you. Yes, you yes, see, yes. I've been saving it up. Say, I saved it all up, up to <laughs> lay it all out there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, everything that Nia said, everything that everyone else has said, most definitely. Um, for me, I actually was thinking about heavy, like literally right before Denzel called me. I was like, I want to do this for like my final project in this MFA program. I'm like, I don't know. Mind you, I didn't know that heavy was, I mean, that Denzel, well, I'm calling you heavy. I didn't even know that Denzel was planning on doing this show like this, but I was thinking about it so heavy. Lee, that um, that <laughs> it was like literally like a few days after I was thinking about it. So it was just on my heart so heavy. Denzel called and was like, he sent that the email or the text and was like, we're taking it on tour like to Chicago to East Chicago or to him Indiana and I was like oh okay well that's a that's a confirmation so that's what um inspired me to do it again um and I just feel like heavy it's it's something that it um it humbles me like I feel like heavy is like a brutal reminder of like who I am um so yeah that's what Inspire me. Why is it so quiet? Oh my god. <laughs> we listening. Girl, we listening. Oh my. No, but yeah, it's a it's a brutal reminder, um, in a good way to like who I am. And I feel like it's something that I always try to run from because like I said, a lot of things that's in heavy, it's what I grew up. You know, it's it's my life, it's my past that I feel like I try to like run from a lot. And so Every time I feel like I have a chance to do heavy, it's like no matter how I might feel, if I try to act bougie or like oh, I can't do heavy anymore, it's like I just always feel this, this this need to come back to it because it's like my it's like who I am, and so that's the reason that's one of the reasons why I chose to come back and do heavy because like I said like I, I was already planning on doing it for my final project and also like I said it's like who I am it's a part of me like these people are like they're a part of who I who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to Bethune Cookman, we did it there. And it's just it's just who I am. And it's like I can't I can't hide that. I can't run from that. I can't you know what I'm saying? I can't get away from it. It's who I am. So even being here like this week and I was telling them earlier, like I just felt so good. Not even doing the play, but just being around them in their presence. I just felt so good. I felt like myself again. So I don't know. I said a lot, but yeah. No, we appreciate it. <laughs> we really appreciate it because I, I yeah. think this is what the people need to hear when it comes to this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I did an episode talking about the culture vulture mentality, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> it was just about we're quick to point the finger towards non black people who take from the culture, they make money off of it, and right. we get mad. Mm -hmm. But this brother has put mm -hmm. together this whole production, right. and now is our time to step up and support. 
mm-hmm. he's to have a sold out show. Right. So when people, I don't want people to just look at it like, oh, I grew up with, because I bought my ticket. As soon as he put it up there, I bought my ticket That's right real. away. And I let it be known, support this right here. Mm-hmm. As he was talking about it, I thought it was dope. But this is our opportunity to right. show that unity that has been missing. There's no reason why this place sh- should not sell out when he's bringing it back to his own city, mm-hmm. his own hometown area. Mm-hmm. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. To hear your stories of why you walk. Because, again, y'all could have just left it at we went to co- college together and that's that Mm -hmm. i'm not flying somewhere else or driving somewhere else to go do the same play Mm -hmm. y'all believe in this guy that much Mm -hmm. y'all believe in this play that much it hits home to y'all that much that you will leave what you got going on in your everyday life to support this man and see what his vision was bring it to life to everybody else Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do y'all working hard to make sure that as these people are in the audience watching this play, mm-hmm. they sit there and say, well, shit, mm-hmm. I could relate to that. Mm-hmm. That's my mama. Mm-hmm. That's my brother. Mm-hmm. Right? That's my drunk ass uncle. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, not that I've seen it, but you know, I'm quite sure it's going to be some good shit in there. <laughs> That's why I wanted y'all to let everybody know not only why y'all believed in the play, why y'all wanted to be a part of it, but what made y'all even believe in Denzel? Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, there are so many folks that won't start something mm-hmm. just because they feel like, who's going to believe in my mm-hmm. vision? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to step out on faith. Yeah. You know, the Thought Provoking Podcast literally got started because I used to say, well, damn, why ain't people talking about this? Mm-hmm. I used to sit there and say all the time, I ain't never needed to know the square root of shit mm-hmm. in my mm-hmm. adult life. Mm-hmm. But I do need to know about them damn taxes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They ain't teach me that shit in school. So I started the Thought Provoker Podcast. So there's somebody else that's going to be out there wanting to start, but have every excuse as to why not. Mm-hmm. And Zell is an example of, no, do it. Mm-hmm. You all are giving confirmation as to why you should do it. Mm-hmm. How people do believe in you. You know, we always say all the time, man, we don't support our own. This y'all is right proof, here. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The words that y'all said is proof. So mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to get that side of it. So, you know, not only do I want people to support what he's doing, but I also want that to be a starter for the next person to say, mm-hmm. stop with the excuses of why you can't, why you should do it. Mm hmm. Then you want to highlight with the play, my brother? Man, um, first of all, Will, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, this you, is huge. And like you said, you've been one of the number one supporters from the beginning. Like as soon, and I mean, as soon as we dropped tickets that very week, Will bought some. So I'm just, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful that you have been such a gracious host to my, my family. <laughs> I from, appreciate from Florida y'all. And all that good stuff. And I just say this, I appreciate y'all kind words. I appreciate the fact that y'all are here, and I told y'all that. I'm going to tell y'all that a billion more times. But I could not do this show without these people, period, point blank. When they talk about why they believe in me, I want to flip that and talk about why I believe in them. And this is not even the full cast and crew. This is a portion of us. But the entire cast and crew, as soon as I told them that this is what I wanted to do, and I think I told y'all back in December, Mm-hmm. There was no hesitance, and they and they, there was they didn't hesitate. Yes, I'm coming. Whatever we need to do, blah 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 blah. We gonna be there, and I'm like, wow, okay, cool. And I said, I'm asking you to reprise your role. I'm asking you to come back and do whatever you did, direct, stage direct, all those great things because y'all know me. It wasn't about the show. Yeah, we got talented people all over the world. I could have held auditions, went to Chicago, but I said. Y'all know the show, but y'all know me. Mm-hmm. And y'all know my heart. And y'all y'all see me as, y'all not gas me up, but y'all encourage me. So it was no question about y'all coming back and doing this. And I appreciate that y'all did. And, and we've been up this morning since 6, 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And it's 10 o'clock now, and we almost 11, and we still here. <laughs> and for us, this is the fun part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm grateful that y'all are uh, still rocking with us this whole time. Like, this is beyond a 12-hour day at this point. But this this is what we do. This is what we love to do. And um, I, I want y'all out there who's watching this, not just to support me, but to support all of, all of these amazingly mm-hmm. talented people who you don't know where they're going to be in a year. Mm-hmm. You don't want to, I always say, you don't want to be the person that say, I should have supported so-and-so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, I yeah. could have came to Ashland Denson 
um, see her reprise her role as Renee King because that's going to mean it means something now, but we don't even know what that's going to mean in ten years. Mm -hmm. So jump on jump on the train now. Jump on it while it's raw and you can actually see where your investment is going. Like when y'all come see the show, y'all gonna see. Dang, that ticket helped pay for whatever the case may be, or that that ticket helped me heal myself. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than that. I want y'all to know that when we wrote, when I wrote this, and when we directed, and when we go to this, we're not just thinking about you being entertained. Which unfortunately, that's kind of where art start stops right now. All we want people is just say, mm -hmm. "I had a good time at so and so. I laughed, whatever the case may be." No, this is going. This is going to sit your ass down and make you heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do what we do. So I'm grateful. I want y'all to come out and support this. East Chicago, Hammond, Merrillville, Gary, Griffith, wherever you at, South Holland, all those places. Come out and support some quality art. We're going to be here Saturday at 63 Social Event Center in Hammond, Indiana. Tickets are still on sale. You can get them on Eventbrite or you can pay at the door. And I promise you, I can make this promise live on Thought Provoking Podcast. It's going to be something that you have never seen before. Mm -hmm. I make that promise. And it's going to be something that once you leave, you won't ever be the same. Mm -hmm. and that's a I fact. I like that, my brother. That's a fact. And I'm going to drop the mic on that. He laid that shit out. <laughs> my brother laid that shit out. And you all want to give your social media before we end this? So oh, people yeah. know to follow you. And you want to start that? Yeah, we can start down here. So again, my name is Naya Murphy. You all can follow me on Instagram. Um, D-O-N-T-L-O underscore O-K. Okay, we're going to put that on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm... Oh, dang. <laughs> I'm Ashlyn Denson, and my music name is A. Lachey. You can follow me on Instagram Ashlyn, A-S-H-L-Y-N underscore Lachey, L-A-S-H-A, oh, damn, I can't say my name, L-A-S-H-A-E, yeah. Again, my name is Savion St. John, my Instagram is I dot am, A-M, two underscores, say, spell S-A-I. Mine is real simple, y'all. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I'm like, underscore Denzel Smith. Okay. That's How you spell that? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, my social media is at that's Anita Woods on everything. Okay, y'all. So remember, my name is Laventia Walker, <laughs> <laughs> but my music name is Venice Love. Um, you can check me out on Instagram twelve twelve Venice Love twelve twelve. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. I want to keep it going, but I, I'm sorry, I can't keep y'all all night. They this has been a dope episode, so I hope people definitely come out, support heavy, support each individual. You know, this this is just some, this is some good shit right here. Until next time, this has been another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast. We are out. Peace. Heavy. Heavy. Damn. Heavy. <laughs>